Picture this. You turn on your computer tomorrow and Windows is gone. Not because of a glitch or an update failure, but because an entirely different operating system has taken its place. One that wasn't built in Seattle or Silicon Valley. One that was designed, developed, and deployed from Beijing. This isn't a hypothetical anymore. It's happening right now. Huawei has just unleashed something the tech world didn't see coming. Harmony OS Next, a fully independent operating system built to replace Windows across China's consumer and enterprise markets. And here's the part that should make every executive at Microsoft nervous. This isn't some rebranded Android clone. This is a ground-up, completely original platform that cuts both Google and Microsoft entirely out of the picture. What we're watching unfold is nothing short of a digital revolution. China is declaring independence from American software, and Microsoft is staring down the barrel of a rival it never thought it would face. From mockery to movement, the evolution of harmony. OS. Let's rewind for a moment. For years, Harmony OS was dismissed. Western tech journalists called it vaporware. Analysts treated it like a desperate reaction to U.S. sanctions, a Band-Aid solution Huawei slapped together after Washington banned the company from using Google's Android ecosystem and blocked access to cutting-edge semiconductor technology. And honestly, early on those critics had a point. The first iterations of Harmony OS weren't truly independent. Under the hood, they still leaned on Android's framework. Huawei was essentially using Google's architecture as scaffolding while it built something more permanent. It was survival mode, not innovation. But that era is over. Harmony OS Next represents a complete break. There's no Android code, no Google services, no Windows compatibility layers. This is the first time a Chinese company has built a fully independent operating system at this scale. And it's not just for smartphones. We're talking about an OS designed to run on laptops, tablets, smartwatches, home appliances, industrial equipment, and even cars. This is software infrastructure. And it's being deployed across an entire nation. Survival turned strategy. So why did Huawei go to such lengths? The answer is simple. They had no choice. When the U.S. government cut Huawei off from Android and Windows, it wasn't just a business setback, it was an existential threat. The company faced a brutal decision, either build a new foundation from scratch or watch its empire collapse. Huawei chose to build. For five years, the company poured resources into creating an escape route. Engineers worked around the clock. Developers were recruited by the thousands. Partnerships were formed across China's tech ecosystem. And in 2025, that escape route became a full-scale rebellion. But here's what makes this even more significant. China's government is backing this move with everything it has. Under Beijing's IT independence campaign, thousands of state institutions are being instructed to phase out Windows-based systems. Ministries, hospitals, banks, universities, research labs, they're all transitioning. Huawei is supplying the hardware, the cloud infrastructure, and now the operating system that ties it all together. For a government obsessed with self-reliance and technological sovereignty, Harmony OS isn't just a business opportunity, it's a national imperative, and the results are starting to show. Over 1.2 million developers in China have already begun building native apps for Harmony OS Next. Major platforms like WeChat, Douyin, China's TikTok, Meituan, and the country's largest banking apps are reconstructing their software from the ground up to work seamlessly within Huawei's ecosystem. Think about that for a second. This is the kind of developer buy-in that Microsoft struggled to achieve even with Windows 11, a system built on decades of market dominance. What started as a defensive maneuver has become China's most aggressive challenge to American software supremacy. And for the first time in modern computing history, Windows is facing a competitor with the political backing, financial resources, and national momentum to actually displace it. A different vision? Why Harmony OS isn't trying to be Windows? Here's where, honestly, most Western analysts get it wrong. They assume Harmony OS Next is trying to replicate Windows, 
that it's just another desktop operating system competing on the same battlefield. But it's not. Huawei isn't building a better Windows. They're building a fundamentally different vision of what computing should look like. And that vision directly targets Microsoft's biggest weaknesses. Windows was designed in the 1980s and 90s, in an era when a computer meant one thing, a box on your desk, disconnected from everything else. Sure, Microsoft has tried to modernize, they've added cloud integration, mobile apps, and cross-device features. But at its core, Windows still operates like a standalone system. Harmony OS Next, on the other hand, was built for a world where every device you own, your phone, your laptop, your tablet, your TV, your car, is part of a single, unified computing network. Huawei calls this distributed architecture. But here's what that actually means in practice. Your devices stop acting like separate gadgets. They become one interconnected super device. With Harmony OS Next, you can drag and drop a photo from your phone to your laptop in real time. No cables, no cloud syncing, no third-party apps. You can redirect your phone's camera to your PC during a video call with a single tap. Your tablet can instantly function as a second screen for your laptop. Even your smartwatch and smart speaker become functional extensions of your computer. Windows, with all its legacy code and fragmented architecture, simply cannot deliver this level of fluidity without relying on dozens of external services and apps. But the technical advantages go even deeper. Harmony OS Next runs on a microkernel architecture, which makes it lighter, faster, and more secure than Windows' decades-old monolithic design. Huawei claims up to 30% faster performance, 20% lower energy consumption, and drastically reduced background resource usage. Apps built natively for Harmony OS run closer to the hardware level, which translates to smoother animations, faster app launches, and near-instantaneous multitasking. And here's a detail most people in the West are missing. Huawei is rejecting the Android model where any app can theoretically run on any device. Instead, Harmony OS Next enforces a strict standard native Harmony apps only. That might sound restrictive, but it gives Huawei total control over security, performance, and API access. Developers must rebuild their apps using Huawei's proprietary tools, the ARC compiler and Next-G development kits, which integrate artificial intelligence at the system level. The result? Apps that respond faster and feel more intuitive than anything on Windows or Android, especially when it comes to AI-driven tasks. This shift isn't just technical, it's strategic. Huawei is building an ecosystem where hardware and software are inseparable, the exact formula that made Apple one of the most powerful companies on Earth. And now, for the first time, China has an operating system that doesn't just compete with Windows, it out-evolves it. Microsoft's worst nightmare, losing the enterprise. For decades, Microsoft had one unshakable advantage. No matter what happened in the consumer tech world, no matter how many people bought iPhones or Android tablets, everyone still needed Windows for work. Governments needed it, hospitals needed it, banks, schools, factories, airports, logistics hubs, they all ran on Windows. That dependency wasn't just profitable. It was the foundation of Microsoft's empire. It generated billions in licensing revenue and locked entire nations into a system they couldn't replace. But in 2025, that dependency is being shattered. And not by a scrappy startup or an open source movement, by the world's second largest economy. China's decision to transition government agencies, state-owned enterprises, and public infrastructure to Harmony OS-based systems is a direct assault on Microsoft's most lucrative revenue stream, enterprise and government licensing. Losing individual consumers hurts, but losing government contracts? That's catastrophic. Microsoft earns more from a single ministry's licensing agreement than it does from millions of individual users and China has thousands of these institutions. Even worse for Microsoft, this transition isn't happening slowly or haphazardly. It's coordinated, aggressive, and state-mandated, 
entire sectors, energy, finance, telecommunications, transportation, education, are being directed to adopt Huawei's ecosystem. Windows is being systematically purged from industries that were once considered untouchable. But that's just the beginning. Harmony OS Next is part of something much larger, a full-stack technology replacement strategy. Huawei isn't just offering an operating system. They're offering the OS, the cloud platform, the processors, the AI accelerators, the developer tools, and the security infrastructure, all in one package. This creates an end-to-end -end solution that Microsoft cannot block, cannot sanction, and cannot compete with on price or integration. China is constructing a digital universe where Microsoft, Google, and Apple have zero structural influence. And here's what truly terrifies policymakers in Washington. If China proves that a major modern economy can function without Windows, other countries might follow suit. Many developing nations already depend heavily on Huawei for 5G networks, data centers, and cloud services. Harmony OS could be the final piece a low-cost, highly integrated alternative to Microsoft's ecosystem. Countries in Africa, Southeast Asia, Latin America, and the Middle East, especially those already targeted by U.S. export controls, might see this as their path to digital independence. This isn't just about China rejecting Windows. This is about the very real possibility that entire regions could abandon American software dominance and replace it with a self-sufficient Chinese alternative. For Microsoft, this isn't a competitive threat. It's an existential crisis, and it's already underway. The West wakes up, a global software migration. When Huawei first announced Harmony OS Next, most Western analysts dismissed it as another China-only experiment, interesting perhaps, but ultimately irrelevant to the global tech landscape. But the West is waking up to a harsh new reality. This isn't an experiment. This is the largest coordinated software migration in modern history, and its consequences will ripple far beyond China's borders. The first shockwave comes from something the U.S. government cannot control. An operating system cannot be sanctioned. You can restrict chip exports. You can blacklist factories. You can block access to advanced semiconductors. But software, especially software developed entirely within China's borders, is immune to export bans. Once Harmony OS Next is deployed on hundreds of millions of devices, no amount of political pressure can pull it back. For Washington, that's deeply unsettling. For Beijing, it's liberating. But the second shockwave is even bigger. China isn't just replacing windows in offices and government buildings, it's replacing windows everywhere Chinese products go. Laptops, tablets, smart TVs, industrial controllers, home appliances, automobiles. Through hardware exports, Harmony OS will spread globally without needing a Western market entry strategy. If China exports 300 million devices this year, Harmony OS goes with them. Then there's the geopolitical dimension. Countries working closely with Huawei on 5G infrastructure, data centers, and AI platforms are already discussing deeper software integration. The UAE, Saudi Arabia, Indonesia, Brazil, South Africa, these nations want independence from U.S. digital influence. Harmony OS gives them exactly that, a complete ecosystem not controlled by Silicon Valley or Washington and Western tech companies are starting to panic. If global manufacturers adopt Harmony OS as the default system for budget devices, Microsoft risks losing the entry-level market entirely. Europe, still heavily reliant on Huawei for telecom infrastructure, may eventually face tough decisions about compatibility and cost, decisions that could tilt in Huawei's favor once Harmony OS matures. Meanwhile, tech CEOs across the West understand something clearly, even if they won't say it publicly. Operating system dominance isn't just a business advantage, it's strategic power. Whoever controls the OS controls the apps. Whoever controls the apps controls the data. And whoever controls the data controls the future economy. For the first time in 40 years, the West faces a competitor capable of breaking that chain. 
the point of no return. Harmony OS Next is more than just a software upgrade. It's the moment China announced to the world that it no longer needs American technology to power its digital future. For decades, Windows was the backbone of global computing. Untouchable, irreplaceable, universally accepted. But now, for the first time, that dominance is being challenged. Not by a tech startup, not by an open source community, but by a nation of 1.4 billion people, armed with a state-backed technology ecosystem and a crystal clear mission. Break free from dependence on the West. Whether Harmony OS will spread beyond China remains uncertain. But inside China, the outcome is no longer in question. Windows is losing ground it once thought was permanent. And Huawei is building a fully independent technology stack that the United States cannot sanction, cannot restrict, and cannot shut down. This isn't the old rivalry of iOS versus Android. This is something far bigger. America's software empire versus China's digital sovereignty. The operating system wars of the past decided convenience. The operating system war of today will decide power.